So Mystic Veil vale is a real life uh, card game uh, that just got a digital adaptation. It is a lovely card game, both in terms of visual and, and theme. The two to four players that are playing this game represent different clans of, I guess, druids or something like that, that are trying to repair and bring back to life this mystic veil that has uh, fallen into decay. I don't know, maybe there was a dwarven fortress here that ruined everything some time ago and they're trying to fix everything. Could be. Um, what's unique about this is normally in these um, deck building card games, typically you start with, you know, a few cards in your deck and you are purchasing cards that get added to your deck and build up over time, right? If you think of example, like Star Realms and Dominion and I mean, so many different things, that's sort of the mechanic. Mystic Veil is very different because each player starts with a deck of 20 cards, but cards is a little bit misleading because what they really are in the real life version are these, these plastic sleeves with a clear front and what happens when you purchase, you don't you don't purchase cards exactly, you purchase what they call advancements. And these are other clear pieces of plastic that actually slip within the sleeve and they do these overlapping things and like that and they build up the card. Um, basically each card has three slots. So, um, and some cards start off completely blank, some start with one slot already filled. And when you're buying these advancements, they, they either fit in the top middle or bottom slot over there. So you're building up your, your cards as you build up your deck, which is a really interesting way to do things. Um, and again, it is just gorgeous. The real life version is quite pretty, but the digital version is even prettier because there's all these little subtle animations on the cards and things like that. It's really nice. So we're gonna go, yeah, Gloom does something a little bit similar like that, exactly. So we're gonna dive right in. Um, the one the one thing that I gotta say about the digital version that annoys me, um, if I'll, I'll send this video to developers afterwards it would be really nice if it would remembered what you had set up last time for the number of players because like i got to do this say every time if i want to play four players you know just just remember what i put in last time the one criticism i will say about the actual game the actual mechanic it is a fairly non-interactive game um they're effectively in in, in 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 a very significant sense you are more or less playing solitaire the other players are there to sort of they put a clock on the game like there's there's a there's an end game condition that the other players affect um as well as the pool of cards will get cycled somewhat based on what the other players do but there's not much in the way of direct or there is no nothing in the way of direct interaction with other players um now, sometimes, for some people, that's actually really good because it also means there's no direct competition. There's no cards that screw someone else or do anything like that. It, it's very friendly and sort of non-competitive. Um, I guess the most you could do is sort of like look at the other player and trying to figure out maybe what card they'd like to buy next. And maybe you can buy that card out from other them. But there's not really a lot of that. Um, so number of players. Uh, the more players there are, I would say the game will probably end a little bit sooner. Um, there is a, basically there's a pool of victory points that you can draw from. And the more players there, there are, the more victory points are available. But I, I still feel like, I, I've only experimented in the digital version. It feels like you get more turns in a two player game than a four player game. Yeah, um, and that, what and that means, hey, it's Whiskey and Chocolate from Girly Gibbous. Hey, thank you very much. I've had time to watch the stream lately. Uh, getting ready for a first child. Whoa! Any plans for more Factorio we do soon? No plans, but there has certainly been an itch for it. So uh, keep an eye open for that, and we will uh, we will see. Um, so right, this pool over here, 33 points. I was saying uh, this is how many points victory points are available in the four-player game. In the two-player game, there will be fewer, but not you know not half as many so i feel like you get a few more turns as in a two-player game so there's a little bit more time to maybe build combos whereas in a four-player game you got to be a little bit more active about maybe pursuing victory points a little sooner um so we'll play four players here because what it's going to do is it's going to cycle more of the cards a little bit faster okay so we have our deck of 20 cards and the cards this is this is my basically my hand down here this is referred to as the field these three cards over here are the car the three cards in my in my field in my hand right now. One of these is actually totally blank. And in real life, this would just be a clear plastic sleeve with nothing going on. The other two are basically identical. There's a cursed land here and a cursed land here. And again, you can clearly see there's sort of three slots going on in these cards, which is very cool. Um, we'll talk about these symbols as we go forward. There's gonna be a bit more, a few more symbols as we go. But for now, the blue dot over here, these, this is your mana. This is, this is your money to buy cards. Um, the cards over in this row over here, these are the cards I can buy with my money. Um, and the top right corner of the card is how much it costs to purchase that particular card. 
This is my deck over here. And one of the interesting mechanics in this game is the top card of your deck, you always flip upright. And that card is on deck. It's not in my hand, so I can see what it is. I know this is the next card in my deck. I don't have access to this mana here to spend this turn. However, how many cards can you draw every turn? How many cards can you have in your field? That is determined by these red symbols. This is decay. And you have a limit, you can see over here, of three decay showing. If you go over that, you have spoiled your, your field or your turn, um, and you basically just lose your turn, is, is the way it works. And the decay symbols include the one from your on deck card over here. And this has a lot of implications about how you run the game. So, um, so you can see I have three decay symbols visible, although this card isn't even in my hand, but it still counts. I could, during this planting phase, I could push my luck and take this card and push it into my field, I would then reveal the next card on top of my deck. If it doesn't have a decay symbol, well, hey, I, 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 you know, I came out ahead. Now I'm gonna have three mana to spend instead of just two. However, if it does have a decay symbol, then I've spoiled my, 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 my hand and I will lose my turn. Pushing that luck is gonna be a big part of the game. You can uh, see out of your 20 cards, nine of your cards are cursed lands. So early on, uh, it's sort of 50-50, although we've already seen three. So maybe, you know, statistically we'd be slightly ahead. I don't think I'm gonna do it over here. That's going to be fine. Because with two, I can actually purchase uh, some decent stuff. So I'm gonna go into my harvest phase, which is when I get to actually purchase things. We've got four players over here. Every player is a part of this, yeah, that sort of druidic clan. Uh, we've got the Dawn Seekers, we've got the Beast Brothers, we've got the Life Wardens, and um, the one we are here, I believe, are the Water Guard. All of these decks are identical. There's no difference between them whatsoever at all. It's just, you know, what color do you like? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and purchase a card. These four glowing ones are the only ones I can afford. We'll talk about these Veil cards at the top a little bit later, but basically they don't get purchased with mana. Instead, some cards like this Dawn Singer over here has this, this is a spirit symbol over here. And these spirit symbols are what you use to purchase the Veil cards at the top. The Veil cards have their own area. They're always out. They don't go in your deck. They're just always present and sort of passively give you some sort of bonus. I'm gonna start with the Peacekeeper Druid, which is actually quite cool. So she doesn't give us mana. She does give us one of the spirit tokens that we can use to purchase some of the Veil cards later on. Once per turn, if you were to spoil, so if she's in play, then if I were to spoil, so if I if I draw a fourth um, um, a token, uh, decay token, then instead I can discard that on deck card instead and see the next one. The next one might also have a decay token, so I might still get, you know, spoiled, but it gives you the opportunity to generally push your luck a little bit more aggressively. And I kind of like that. So I'm going to purchase this and I'm going to go and add it to a card. So I can't add it to this one because this is the same slot. That slot is already full. So either I'll have to add it to my completely blank card or over here. With the Peacekeeper Druid, I'm going to put it on a card with a Decay token already because most likely I'm going to want to push my luck when I've already got these sort of Decays going on. These blanks I'm going to leave for some more combos. In particular, some cards have these little Guardian tokens over here. These don't do anything by themselves, but some cards, like this one, give you something for each Guardian token on the card. So you tend to want to build a card that's all focused on Guardian, that sort of thing. Anyway, we'll go ahead and end our turn, and that's going to be that. Bees! Covered in bees! So, there's a couple ways to score points. Um, first of all, some cards, like, um, actually, the plow is a good example over here. The plow, some cards, like the plow, have this gray cube token in the bottom right corner. This is how many victory points this card or this advancement is worth. And when the game ends, you go through the deck, you count up all of your gray cubes, and you earn, you have that many victory points. In addition to that, some cards, including this plow, will say something like, when you play this card, you earn a blue victory cube. And these are also worth victory points. The difference between these two is the gray ones, you just add up all your gray tokens at the end of the game. And those are some points. With the blue ones, whenever you play this, you take one of blue cubes from this little reserve over here. When this reserve is empty, that the game ends. Now, no one gets screwed. Let's say player two is the one to empty the reserve. Player three and four still get their final turn. And if you earn victory points and this this reserve here is empty, you still get to grab victory points from, from like an extra bank over there. So no one gets sort of screwed. That's just the end of the game. So those are two different ways to score points. There's also a lot of different ways to build your deck. So here you can see, 
I actually got really lucky here. Yeah, I drew a lot of cards before I hit my third decay token. Now, again, most of them are blank, but two of them were these fertile soils. So I have four money to spend here, um, which is great. I'm not gonna push my luck because four bucks is fantastic. We're gonna go to the harvest stage. So we've got a lot of options here. I could buy a couple more fertile soils um, and improve my economy. That's not too bad. We could spend four and get a wayfinder who's worth one victory point. He gives me an extra mana to spend and he's got another one of these spirit tokens to buy veil cards. That's pretty good. There's also the grassland. The grassland's kind of funny. The grassland has, I don't know what this, this symbol um, is actually called. I don't, I don't remember. Um, it's an anti-decay token. Green trees cancel out red trees is what it is. Um, and this is quite cool. Now the grassland also has like a negative thing. While this is in your field, i.e. your hand, um, you have one less mana to spend. So effectively, if I were to add a grassland to this card over here, the green tree would cancel out the red tree. So this would no longer be decay, which would mean I could draw more cards, but it does effectively cancel out this one dot of mana. The thing is, and that sounds pretty lame because it makes this card be basically a zero card, a blank card effectively. But what's nice about this is by canceling out the K, you can draw more cards from your deck. So um, it's actually worthwhile doing this, even though it looks like it's sort of canceling this money and it is, it's making your deck better because it increases the chance that you can draw more of your deck. And if you bring your cursed lands in your deck from nine down to eight, then when you do push your luck, it's even more likely that it's gonna work out well for you. So grasslands are really strong. That being said, I think I'm gonna grab the Wellspring here. So Wellspring isn't worth any victory points, doesn't give me any mana, but it's got two spirit tokens over here. Uh, in particular, it's very convenient the Wellspring has the exact two spirit tokens needed to buy, say, an Azure Lake. These over here, which will passively give me $1 forever, which is pretty nice. If I had a card that already had any spirit tokens, I would add it's the Wellspring to it. Chocolate. Because, hey, cool man! Thank you very much! Oh, uh, what did you do? Hold on, I can't read it. I'll bring it up on the other screen. Oh, what did you do to your stomach? Since it hurts, better get better soon. I think I, I think we've just got a, a case of the stomach flu kicking around the house here. Um, unfortunately, it, it really, uh, it really, really sucks. It really, really sucks. Um, but thank you for your concern. One thing you want to do, I was going to say, is really you want to have, uh, you want to concentrate your, your spirit tokens on a single card because you need so that like drawing one or two spirit tokens a lot of times won't do anything for you you'd rather draw zero spirit tokens and then on some other turn draw like four of them to enable you to buy a big card so whatever we'll probably try to build up the wellspring so i'm going to put it on one of our blanks here so that we can add more spirit tokens on these cards later on so that'll be my whole turn i spent four bucks done 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 symbol is called growth oh thank you very much the green tree symbol is called growth versus decay love it thank you Okay, now here's an example of when we might want to push our luck a little bit. We have two bucks available right now, which means we could buy a fertile soil um, and, you know, add it to one of these uh, these cursed lands. I mean, it makes it a little bit better, that's fine. But wouldn't it be better to buy, whoops, the field of flower, right? Which is worth two money. Um, it costs three. So if we push our luck, this card here would get added to our field, and then we'd have three money right away. We might go bust. If we reel another decay token, we would spoil this turn. The thing is, that's not the end of the world. And the reason is, if you spoil your turn, this little symbol right over here, this is like a stored mana symbol. What happens when you spoil, you actually get to flip that face up and you get to save one mana for future turns. Um, you can only have one of these saved up at any given time. So going, you know, spoiling twice in a row is, is doesn't help you. Um, but it means that there's going to be a better chance that we're going to be, be able to buy something more expensive on future turns with that. Um, the other thing is, if we do it now, we're also burning one of these cursed lands, which makes it more likely that our next turn will be able to draw deeper into our deck. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to go ahead and push our luck. Okay, we did spoil. We flipped over a fourth uh, decay token. But again, our next turn would have been this card and this card, which means we would have gotten a pretty weak turn. Now we've eliminated one of these. We are gonna bank a mana for next turn. And I think that's going to be okay. Rather than just having played it safe and just gotten a fertile soil, I think this is a great time to do it. So we skip our harvest phase, unfortunately, but there we go. Next turn, we're gonna have four bucks available. It's not great. Actually, next turn might be another good turn to push our luck. Ah, we'll see. We'll have a discussion depending on what cards are there. Ba -ba 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 -ba. 
Definitely going to be a priority to get this game to add to our board game collection. Seems now gl uh, really glad you played today. Excellent, Splash. Yeah, I've never played this in real life um, because it's two to four players. My gaming group is usually five or six people. Um, but it's it's been one I've wanted to try for a long time, so I'm happy there's a digital version. Okay, so now we have, we have three sort of real mana real mana to spend, three real mana here, plus the one banked one. We don't have to spend the banked one right away. If we're happy only spending three, then, you know, we would do that. Um, we could push our luck, because actually we have a little bit of defense against pushing our luck on deck here. This Peacekeeper Druid um, does give you the ability to discard a spoil card. The thing is, I don't think I'm going to bother now, because is there still a chance you'll spoil, and then we'll have, like, wasted the bonus mana? With four, we can buy a Dawnslinger or a Grassland, or we could get a couple of the two-cost cards. Earth's Chant Chord is interesting. It doesn't do anything by itself, but adding cards to this in the future costs two less. Um, so it's effectively the same as it'll give us it'll give us four bucks over the course of the game, which, honestly, with the size of your deck and the number of turns you get... Fertile Soil probably gives you about four bucks over the course of the game, but this also lets you effectively get a more expensive card on a turn where you shouldn't, which is really cool. We could get the Grassland just to cancel out one of the take to tokens, and if it's going to be a longer game, building up with that where you just try to cancel as many decays as possible so you can draw, like, your entire deck on a turn is amazing. In a four-player game, it might be a little short. Question is, do we get a Dawn Singer? So the Dawn Singer gives us a spirit token that we can buy the cards on the top. That is cool and fine. Also, you gain one mana for each guardian token on this card, and it comes with one. Now, one of the things I will say in this digital version, it is lovely that they do this like full screen art until once you add it to a card, then it turns into like the little sliver over here. But in the advancement track, it gives you the full screen art. But to me, it's slightly confusing because this text and this symbol over here is lined up over here. Because at first I was like confused, like, oh, how do the Guardian tokens overlap? Um, but really the Guardian token will be over here once it's on a card. So this will be worth a buck by itself and could be worth a lot more money as we build it up. So in a longer game, the Grassland lets you set up insanely cool combos. Um, Dawn Singer is better for the economy in unlocking this. And I think in a four player game, I think it's gonna be a little shorter. So I'm really tempted to just grab the Dawn Singer. But I could see both ways. I could also see something like doing Earth Chant Chorus plus Fertile Soil. I'm going to do the Dawn Singer for this time. Um, oh, I got to skip past the uh, planting phase and we'll put it on this. And I'm going to put it on its own card because what we're hoping to do with this is pile it on with other cards that got these Guardian symbols, for example, so that we can get more and more benefit from that. So we'll end that turn. That'll be okay. Uh, you cannot, as far as I know, you can't add an upgrade to the card that's on deck. I'm pretty sure you cannot. We'll confirm that later on, but I'm pretty sure you can't. Next turn, next turn's going to be very nice here. I'm not going to push my luck because I definitely don't want to spoil it. Well, see, I got the Peacekeeper, so I could be more aggressive, but there's actually no point. One, I don't want to spoil these spirit tokens that I've got. And two, with three mana, we can buy a Field of Flower, which is great. So we're just going to go to Harvest Phase. So you'll see the Azure Lake is lit up because I have the Wellspring, which has got these two spirit tokens on there. And in addition to that, not that it matters, I also have the Peacekeeper Druid, which has an extra spirit token. Um, but it means I can purchase the Azure Lake, which is wonderful, because this is just a passive effect. From now on, this won't do anything for me this turn. But from now on, every harvest, I will simply have an extra mana to spend. Boom. Love it. And again, this goes into its little area down here. Um, and then with three bucks, I, will, I believe I'll buy this Field of Flower here, and I'm going to put it on uh, this card right over here so it'll be a big money card and i really like to do that i like it's you know with with the spirit tokens you definitely want to build them up on the single card with the money there's you can think you can spread it out a little bit um and what it does is like on turns where you draw both the blank and the big money card it's exactly the same as if you you had split them and they were onto two separate cards right but if you split them there's some of the time you'll only draw one of them so it increases the chance that you'll have more small money turns, whereas the other way increases the chance that you'll have some like no money turns and some big money turns. And I'd rather have big money turns personally. Um, okay, it's our turn again. We got three bucks, no spirit tokens. Three bucks doesn't do much for us. This is gonna be, an, I think, another good turn to just go ahead and push our luck. If we get the four, hey, great, we buy a Wayfinder. If we don't, well, we get to save mana for the next turn. Um, and we burn another one of these cursed lands, so we have a really good turn next turn. We got spoiled again. Okay, we're actually getting some pretty rotten luck with that, but what can you do, right? 
Owls are cute and they're all also really powerful. Nice little animation on them too. So the owls are worth a bunch of money. They give you a victory point, and whenever you play it, you can discard another card in your field. So you you get this and you discard when your curse lands. Okay, so I really don't want to go and push my luck this turn because if I spoil again, I sort of I don't get the extra mana token. We've got five points over here, which actually opens up a lot of cool stuff. So we'll just go to the harvest mode here. So um, I don't. It doesn't make sense to buy two two dollar cards. Well, actually, it might because. I have five points to spend, but one of them is this bank token. I could just save it for the next turn. I could just spend four and keep the bank token for the next turn. That's not so bad. We could build a, a big fertile soil card, right? Worth three bucks, so that's okay. Um, or what we could do is we could get the plow. So the plow is worth a victory point by itself. Plus every time you play it, you pick up a blue victory point and it's worth a buck and it's got one of the green spirit tokens on it. That's not bad. And then there's also the, the feral chieftain, um, which is worth one spirit token and he gives you victory tokens for each guardian symbol on this card, including his own. So he's worth a guardian symbol, a spirit token, and a buck. By itself, the plow is better. Or, sorry, because this is not worth a buck. By itself, the plow is better because it's exactly the same, plus has a dollar. But if you put Feral Chieftain on a card with other guardian stuff, then it becomes much more insane. I would really, I'm wondering though, about just grabbing two fertile soils and saving up the points and hoping we can get a mindful owl or something. Now yeah, we'll get the plow. We'll start banking those sweet, sweet blue points. Again, it comes down to, do you think the game's going to be shorter or longer? And in my experience, the four-player games end a little quicker than I normally like. So we'll go for a little bit more early point generation with the extra cube there. Okay, planting phase. Uh, again, we have three points right now, which is not a very efficient number. We're going to push our luck because actually we have the push our luck protection here with the Peacekeeper Druid. Because if we spoil, we can discard the top card. That is not a spoil. The question now is, do we push our luck even more? Four bucks can buy us the Hawk. The Hawk's a little tricky because every time you play the Hawk, you get two victory points and it's worth two victory points and it's a guardian and it's one of the animal spirit tokens. The problem is it is decay. So you'll draw fewer cards, but the Hawk is really strong by itself. It doesn't give you money, but it's pretty good. And especially if you can combo it with other stuff, it's quite nice. Um, but I think because we do have a little bit of protection here, I'm going to be, I'm going to go YOLO here. And this is a big money card. It could allow us to buy, and I can't get to the eight. It gets a growth tender, which actually we don't have a growth. Wait, wait, what we do is we buy a mindful owl. All right, let's do it. Okay. Whew. All right. We didn't bust. We do have the protection against busting, but it's possible we'll bust twice in a row and we'll still be screwed. Hey, thanks for the bits. Um, the nine, the nine. Took me a second to parse you. Uh, so we'll do that. So we'll waste one thing. I mean, the growth tender is really cool. It gives you a growth token, an anti-decay for each um, guardian symbol on the card. Um, so it's quite good to pair with something like a hawk because it cancels that one. Plus when you get a second guardian token on that, you're coming out ahead. But the mindful owl will be wonderful. And uh, because yeah, being able to discard some other crappy card is really good. So we'll go ahead and throw it on here. Um, in hindsight, actually, I think that would have been better to put on another card. Because on a big money turn, we're really... Eh, it's going to be fine. Hoot for the L. What is this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, then we might add the Hawk to this tile, then. Actually, I'd really like to add the Chieftain to it, but I don't know if we'll push that much luck. Okay. So we have four mana. We don't have enough spirit tokens over here. We could purchase the Hawk. So again, the Hawk does have the Decay, which is a little bit crummy, but it's a guardian card. We could add it to the Dawn Singer, which means that this ability will be worth an extra buck. So all of a sudden, if we add the Hawk to the Dawn Singer card, the Hawk is effectively worth a mana, where it, was, it wasn't before. It does give us a card with two spirit symbols on it, which is quite nice, and you'll often give us a chance to possibly buy something. For example, the Sunstone Eerie, would be exactly what we would need to purchase with that kind of combo card. I don't like creating a new decay card, but I think it's a good thing. If we did push our luck, we could get the hulking Thornhide instead, which is worth somewhat more blue victory points, but I don't think that actually puts us in the better location. And honestly, two of the sun symbols, well, it does work out for the radiant pillar, but no, I, I won't push our luck. And I think I will buy the, car the hawk and add it here. We did create a new Decay card, though. 
Oh, that's true. You can always push into the big owl card. Good point, Logic Gate. <clears throat> um, oh, that's a shame. We've got this, which got a couple of spirit tokens, which is great. The problem is, it's not going to be enough to buy anything. Um, oh, we can get the Druid Song. Okay, I don't think we're going to push here, because with $4, we can get Druid Song. So, this is worth a victory point at the end, and it's got a wild card spirit token, um, which is going to enable a lot of purchasing. It would be really, really good if this was on the bottom or middle, because I would 100% add it to this card over here. Because then, every time we drew this card, um, with these two symbols plus a wild card, we are, we're almost certainly going to be able to buy something every single time. Unfortunately, it's a top slot card, so we don't get that. So I think I'll just add it to this Fertile Soil card over here. Um, again, I'm going to avoid putting stuff on these because I'm going to be eager to discard these. So I'd rather not put stuff on this if I can avoid it. Oh, that would have been so good if I could have added it to that. Take a look at our score. We've got five grays banked. So does red. Uh, yellow and green are a two and one. But again, this will explode quite quickly. Um, I see a lot of the games end on sort of your 13th or 14th turn. You can play this game multiplayer. I have not tested the online multiplayer, but you can. Um, I don't think there's any hot seat, which is too bad because it's actually not a game of hidden information. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't think you can play at hot seat. I think it's only versus AI. And as we know from our programming tutorial, it wouldn't be that hard to make a hot seat version of games, as it turns out. Mm. Oh, there's no more bottom fertile soils. Oh, so I didn't talk about how this um, this this set of cards regenerates. Um, the fertile soils you actually start with three packs, three stacks of fertile soils. Uh, there's and there's six of each of the top, middle, and bottom fertile soils, and they're always out there until they run out. For the other cards, uh, there's actually card levels based on these um, these dots over here. When you buy a level one advancement, you replace it with another level one advancement from the stack over here. We've run out of level one advancements, so then when you buy a level one, you would replace it with a level two, and so on and so forth. Um, the higher level cards just tend to be a lot more expensive. They tend to be more powerful as well, but that's it. So we're out of level ones, and we're out of some of the fertile soils. We've got six dollars to spend now, which is quite good. You can get potentially a grove tender. Oh yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, I mean, we can get a Mindful Owl, don't get me wrong, that's really good. But the Grove Tender gives you one green tree for each Guardian token on this card. This card has two Guardian tokens, including Decay. So this will cancel this Decay, plus give us another, like, room for extra Decay so we can dig deep into our deck. Uh, really, 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 really good. It is worth noting that the Grove Tender by itself doesn't give you money, doesn't give you victory points or anything like that. Um... And it's one of these things where, like, if it's going to be a long game, setting up these, like, big combos, Grove Tenders becomes good. If it's a shorter game, you don't get as much. So we can buy either a Sunstone Eerie or an Exodus Road. Exodus Road is just worth two victory points, doesn't do anything. Sunstone Eerie isn't worth any victory points, but you have the ability to spend two mana to convert one of your um, spirit symbols into a wild card symbol for this turn. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility for purchasing things. I'm sort of on the fence here. It would be nice to be able to more consistently purchase some of these cards, but two victory points is two victory points. And Moonwolf is also, yeah, it's a great card. Um, we'll get the Sunstone Eerie just so that we can sort of show off the mechanic, I guess. I'm not sure if it's the best path to victory or not. Uh, ah, there we go. So we're drawing our Mindful Owl, so we get to discard a card from our field. Well, let's discard one of these cursed lands over here. Right? Exactly. Um, so that way we can draw a little deeper. All right, we have a, money, a big money turn at 8, but that's it. No spirit tokens. You can see people are starting to make some points, right? Red's starting to get a little... I mean, we're 8, they're at 9. It's our first turn over here. Uh, I'm... We could push our luck with a Peacekeeper Druid. If we really wanted to buy Aurora. I mean, we'd have to we'd have to draw two cards, which is a little sc scary here. Um, going from eight to nine doesn't do anything, so I don't think we will. But Aurora's quite cool. You gain a victory token for every two cards in your field when you play Aurora. So this is really good if you've built one of these decks where you've canceled all your decay, so you're drawing, like, most of your deck every turn. Then Aurora banks you tons of points, but it tends to be very late game. Um, anyway, I'm not going to push. So, Magic Seeds is worth points. 
Um, it also gives you money for each other card in your field. Like, this is a big money card. It does have Decay. We could buy two cards. Just buy a couple of Moonwolves. And set up another Guardian card. They're worth victory points by themselves, which isn't too bad. If we did have one more, the Feral Chieftain plus, you know, a Moonwolf or something would be quite cool because of the victory point generation. Then six and Sunstone to get the World Tree. Oh, no, um, if you're thinking Sunstone, this does not generate an extra token for us. It converts one of ours into a wild card. So we can change our Green Leaf Spirit token into a wild card, but we still only have one Spirit token. So I can't use it to purchase um, another one of these, unfortunately. I think I'm just going to double Moonwolf. The Druid does save you from the first, but maybe I could have pushed. The problem is you could you could bust twice in a row, because what it does is it discards the top card if you were to spoil, but the next one after that could be another bust. So it makes it a little easier to push. But if we busted there... Like, we really had- we would have had to push our luck a couple of times. I don't know, man. Ooh, Red just had a huge turn. This is definitely going to be a pushing turn. In fact, I'm not even worried about busting, because, like... Like, four points. I mean, I guess we could buy a, haul a Hawk. Oh, we could buy a Druid Song. Hawk's ultimately worth more points, but the Druid Song can maybe let us unlock more crap up here. And the Hawks have the Decay, so I don't like them. I could just keep pushing and maybe even intentionally bust or something. I will buy the Druid Song. There we go. We're going to be able to purchase uh, something else up top here this turn, which is nice. We actually drew one of our wild cards as well. We're going to have a fair amount of flexibility in terms of what we can buy here. We only have four bucks in play, and we don't have a, an anti-busting thing. So, I mean, we'll just have to go. Um, I actually would very much consider putting the Hawk on this, except it's in the top slot. <laughs> Maybe I should have pushed. I didn't want to, though, because I want to be able to buy something from the top. So, um... Blooming Arbor is quite cool. If you were to spoil, you may discard this to gain a, a green tree, so to cancel the spoil. It's not worth any victory points by itself, and you do have to discard it. Um, there's, I don't think there's any reason to get a second Sunstone Eerie. I think we can buy an Azure Lake, though, even though it's also not worth victory points. It's worth some money. A Blooming Arbor does give us like the ability to go for a crazy-ass turn, though. You know, at this point, I don't know if we actually need as much money, especially if we can afford to, like, be really aggressive with a future push. I could buy two Fertile Soils. Boom and boom. I could buy the Hawk. Again, it's got Decay. But it's worth a lot of points. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oh, you want to avoid building a card with double decay? Because you could end up, like, at the end of your turn when you're just revealing your stuff. You know, you have a couple of decay tokens, and you turn over something with two decay tokens, and you instantly bust before you even take a turn. Uh, so we're going to discard this Cursed Land. Yes. There's a turn! 17 money and a crap ton of spirit tokens. Yes. We actually have double bust protection between the Peacekeeper Druid and uh, the spirit card we've got. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push just to cancel this for the future turn. Even though, like, like we don't want to spoil this turn, obviously, but we have so much protection. I'm going to push just to minimize the chance, to or to maximize the chance that our next turn will be crazy. There you go. So that would be a bust. I will use her ability to discard that card. There we go. It's no longer going to be a bust. So what we've done is we've eliminated a lot of crappy um, decay cards. So our next turn will also be amazing. And I was confident I, to do that because we have the emergency button of um, the Blooming Arbor, which is not discard the card and reveal the next one because you could double bust. This is just, okay, we gain a green thing so that we definitely don't bust. So it's super protection. 
Okay, I'm going to start by looking at the cards up here first. Um, you are limited to two purchases per turn, by the way. Well, two purchases of advancements and two purchases of the, the top cards. So, um, looking up here first, because we might decide to spend two bucks to do some wild card trickery. There's a few possibilities. The Conclave events isn't worth any points, doesn't give us anything, except once per turn, we can add an extra Guardian symbol to one of our cards. And some of our cards really stack well with Guardian symbols. Like, we could put the Guardian symbol on this card, which would give us an extra green tree. So that's pretty cool. That being said... Oh, we got, oh, we can't afford Ancient Life Roots? No, we totally can. We're going to purchase Ancient Life Roots. It's not worth victory points. And actually, look at look at red. 34 gray points banked. How did that happen? Just out of nowhere. But having a permanent green would be insane. But we need victory points. I'm so sad because I really want to get this. Because again, it lets you draw your whole deck. But we might need to just go for pure victory points. What do you think, you guys? Uh, this is a permanent guardian symbol, or permanent. Oh no, uh, this is a temporary guardian symbol. So just the next one for that turn. A lot of people want the roots. Okay, we're gonna root it up, you guys. So I'm gonna go to Sunstone Eerie. I'm gonna spend two bucks to convert the claw symbol into a wild card. There we go. So now I can spend two leaf, one sun, and then the wild card to purchase ancient life roots. There we go. Okay. Now we still have 16 bucks left over, which lets us get some crazy cards. Um, so the stags are interesting. They have a decay because all the animals have some decay on them. Um, but they give you four victory tokens every time you play it. They're worth two in your deck. They're worth a claw. They also have double guardian symbols on them, which is interesting. Um, the problem is... We don't have a card that takes advantage of Guardian Symbols right now. So it's a little less sexy. The Ent Elder is really cool because it doesn't give us Decay. It gives us one mana and one of each Spirit token. It's worth two points by itself. It's not worth any points when you play it. And it's got a Guardian Symbol. Um, the Life Balloon Orchids are worth two points in your deck. Two points every time you play it. And a Wild Card Symbol. Uh, Magic Seeds. We saw like there's tons of different things. There is the Life Bringer Seed over here, which cancels all Decay on this card. Um, so with five, what we could do is we could, with 16 bucks, we could play a stag and put a Lifebringer Seed on it to cancel out the decay. We can't afford the uh, bees plus the stag. We have 16, not 17. So you can see there's like a bunch of ways to do it. Like this is, if we're going to play this a bunch, we could earn a lot of points with it. The Elder Ant lets you buy everything. This lets you win hard with points. Maybe we'll get the Stag plus the Life uh, Bringer Seed. And then what we could do on a future turn, maybe we could add something like the Hive Swarm in the top slot or another uh, Ant or something like that. A lot of people want it. So we'll do this. Um, so the question is, which of the two slots do we do? I guess it doesn't matter. Either the Hive Swarm's in the top slot or this Stag's in the middle. So it doesn't matter so much which I decide to add. Um, I guess there's two decay things in the top slot, so we'll put a Lifebringer seed in the middle. Sort of maximize the odds of uh, being able to take advantage of that. Okay, that's our turn. So we bank three more blue cubes, but we're still getting crushed by red. Just obliterated. A, a double stag, I think, would be... I mean, it earns a lot of points, but that's a lot of decay. Oh my god, Red! So the game will end when this is done. So it turns out this has actually been a low blue cube game. This is a long game. And if I'd known that ahead of time, I would have gone for a little bit more combo rific stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and... Are we going to push here? I mean, I know I've got the ability to cancel um, one, of our, uh, one of our spoils here. Yeah. And it did spoil. So the question is, how much do I care? Nah, I guess I'll spend it. So we're going to burn this now to not spoil. Because five points is actually pretty good. So we can buy something off the top. Um, we can only buy one thing. But um, we could get another Blooming Arbor to protect us. I'm actually thinking at this point, though, I'm going to get the Leyline Nexus just for victory points. We're going to bank that. And with our five bucks, we're definitely going to add a Lifebringer Seed to one of the Decay cards. Um, and yeah, I don't think it matters which one of these we do, so 
I'll just do this. There we go. Doesn't bring us closer to victory, but it does make our engine a little bit, you know, slicker. I couldn't have gotten Pool of Light 2. I mean, I could have bought any of them, but I couldn't buy two cards, I don't think. All right, planning phase again. Um, we will be able to purchase, well, I guess just Azure Lake, which doesn't give us victory points, but it's still okay. Four bucks is really not great, though. I'm going to go ahead and push partially to make this turn better, but also partially to make the next turn better. Um, if I got a second wild card token, I could buy Pool of Light. Oh, could I buy Pool of Light last turn? Oh, yeah, that would have been pretty good. No victory points, but... I'm going to do it. Ah, uh, we did spoil. Uh, oh, we can discard a card. So we'll discard one of these cards with a cursed land. Our next turn will be insane! Look at this. How many, how many spirit tokens we got? We got 20 bucks to spend. We're also going to bank seven more blue tokens. But red is just like... They have 47 points! Like, okay? It's 56 points. 58 points. I've never seen this. I've, I, the max I've ever seen someone do is like high 40s. I think red just got like the god combo going on, so. Blue, blue, blue tokens are bad with red being so far ahead. Yeah, that, that's true. We're going to be ending the game for red. Holy shits. Well, let's we'll solidify a hard second. How about that? This has a wild cost on it, so we can pay with anything. I do like these guys, because they give you more of those tokens. It's also worth victory points, so it's like strictly better than Usual Lake. But good god. Uh, Lifebringer Seed, okay, we got the Lifebringer Seed stag, so uh, something else with a, um, a Decay token like this stag would be quite nice. This has got a Lifebringer Seed on here too, so we'll put that. I gotta, I gotta say, Calm Weather is really nice because it's got a green token, and you look at your next on deck card, you can discard it, so it gives you a lot of ability to push your luck, but we're just gonna go for some victory points now and, and hope that, you know, we can not embarrass ourselves. Oh, that was our final turn, because there's only a couple points left in the, in, the, in the pool, and yellow just grabbed it. So red and green will get their final turn, and that's it. Um, wow, we got wrecked by red. I don't know if we can take a look at other people's deck in here, actually. Oh, there we go. I can. Uh, okay, hold on. That is their veil. Oh, I can look at their deck. Here we go. Oh, man, he was able to get the freaking like the Ent is really good, so he had lots of tokens from there. Um, so he had he had a money card here, you know, a little bit of money. It, it's it's very focused. He didn't execute the Feral Chieftain. He didn't do any. He got a Spirit Bear, which is awesome because it's got a green token, so he was able to cancel that early on. Um, oh man, he was able to build a really good Guardian card here. So this card has two Guardian symbols. So the Dawn Singer here is generating two bucks. And this is generating two freaking growth tokens. So he was able to draw huge from that. Oh, man. Oh, he in the end, he did get a couple of Auroras. I don't think they did. He didn't score that many blue cubes in the end. But Aurora would have let him draw, gain tons. Of, he just was sitting on, like, tons of money. He got, like, good money combos early on. Cleansing Rain for some discard. And just the plow plus that, like... He got a second Spirit Bear as well. God damn. Spirit Bear is so good because they give you those green tokens. Um, he also got... A, what I can't remember. We can't click on her for the name here. This card here. Um, all it does is it's worth victory points. It's worth two by itself and plus one for each other symbol on this card. So um, this was a, a five point like card here with nothing else going on. But, but mostly he was able to buy a million Veil cards. A lot of them are worth big victory points, and a lot of them generate more engine. Oh, like, so he had the Conclave of Ents, so he could put another um, Guardian token on that crazy thing. Damn it! Wow, got completely smoked. Whew! 
Hey, it's the main menu lady. Um, so yeah, a little quick reference for the rules built in here. Um, settings, I had it on fast mode over here. And, you know, and yeah, there's a multiplayer button, but I haven't used it. And yeah, there's a tutorial system uh, that this is how I learned to play the game because I've never played it in real life. So it was very easy to play. So there you go. There's a quick look at Mystic Veil. Um, you get a very lovely card game. It, the, the downside is it's not very interactive. Um, but for some people, that's very good uh, because some people don't want stuff that's very directly competitive, not a lot of screw you stuff. Um, and, and it is lovely both in real life and in here. So I've been having a lot of fun playing this over the last day. Uh, being sick yesterday, all I did is sit back with my laptop. I finally caught up on Doctor Who and I played a bunch of Mystic Veil. Vale. Um, so, you know, that was good. Let's play some Dwarf Fortress, shall we? We could play another game of this. I mean, honestly, we could, it's a lot of fun, but I know a lot of people are here to diggy diggy holes. So that's what we're gonna go and do. Maybe I'll do another video of this on the Yub Tubs later on. So, um, and yeah, there's, there's some some vulnerability RNG in here. And also, it took us um, it took us about 45 minutes to play this session here with a lot of talking. When I'm playing on my own, 15 minutes is about, you know, 15, 20 minutes for one game. So you can burn through a lot of these very quickly, which is nice. 